Yes. You may. Real fast. Okay. Okay, so Xavier, Junebug, real seats, please. Real seats, please. Okay, and then let me just also, I know some of y'all like to sit other places, not for your test. She's going to take attendance based on your CD chart. I don't remember my seat, but I not I think that is your seat. Okay, well, then I'll look and tell you, but you got to sit there. She's going to mark you up. Okay? Yes? Oh, yes? No. No. You may not use it on your test. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Okay, we only have about 30 minutes. Your goal for today, okay, since you only have 30 minutes, is to get through one through seven. Okay, we'll do probably three or four of them together. Okay, and then tomorrow we'll finish that last uh, little bit. Okay? Yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. Okay? Um... Okay, so look please for me at number one. Okay, what is the vertex that is the same as the starting point? Yes, four, negative five. Okay, so put that right there. Now, from here, in order to get the other two points, you would use your calculator. Okay, I see some of you have them, some of you do not, so I'll just put mine up here. You'll put it in y equals. Um, so it says right here to center the table at the vertex. So that's why. It's because you want two points above it and then two points below it. Okay? So I'm typing it in here. It's going to be x minus 4 squared and then minus 5. Okay, I'm going into my graph just to see the picture. Okay, you see that it's a u. It opens up and it's centered at negative 4, 5. Let's write down the two points above it. Okay, uh, what was it supposed to be at? 4, negative 5. Sorry, I said that wrong. Okay, so here's 4, negative 5. The point right above it is 3, negative 4. Write it down. 3, negative 4. And then the one above that is 2, negative 1. So 3, negative 4, 2, negative 1. Okay, now we're going to write the two points below it. Okay, 5, negative 4, and 6, negative 1. Okay, do not graph yet. Okay, 6, negative 1. Okay, remember that for these, we haven't done this in about a week. Okay, you are only graphing one half of the squared function at a time. You don't want the whole parabola. So, if I want x greater than or equal to 4, is that the left half or the right half? That is the right half only. Okay, so what that means, I'm going to put right half only, is that you are going to cross out the top two points. Because those are not the right side of the quadratic. Those are on the left side. So I'm going to cross these two out. Okay, I'll put these are the left side. So those have to get scratched out. Those are not going to be included on your graph. Okay? So the points that are left over, 4, negative 5 is here. 5, negative 4 is here. 6, negative 1 is here. Okay? There's your graph. Now remember, it's always one half or the other. Okay? Never both halves. Okay, how will I get the points for the inverse? You're going to switch them. Very good. So if my first point was 4, negative 5, now it's... 4, 5, 4. Okay, negative 5, 4. My next point was 5, negative 4. Now it's negative 4, 5. And then my next point was 6, negative 1. Now it's negative 1, 6. And then remember that this graph is going to curve so that your graphs match on either side. That should always happen, okay? This is like the first three questions on your test are just like this, okay? Remember the top two parts I get to keep crossed out since I'm not doing that side. Now the other thing that you need to be able to do besides graphing is how to find f to the negative one. Remember that f to the negative one stands for an inverse. 
So remember, to find the inverse, you switch the letters, switch the sides. So I'm going to do this side first, but instead of an x minus 4, what am I going to change it to? Okay, a y minus 4. And then the other side was an equals. Remember, f of x and y are the same. But instead of an equals y, I'm going to put an equals x. Okay? Then from here, you're going to drop your railroad tracks and solve for y. What will I do first? Okay, plus the 5 across. That's correct. Okay, so plus 5 here, plus 5 here. These guys cross out. I have y minus 4 squared x plus 5. What's my next step? Okay, square root, square root. So I'm going to go here and here. Now remember that technically you have to pick the plus or the minus on the square root. If this was a right half, which one do I pick? What does that go with? Is right side the positive or the negative side? Positive. The positive side. So these guys cross out. I have y minus 4 equals the positive square root of x plus 5. And then my last step, if I have a minus 4, I'm going to plus it. And then remember, you can't add it to the 5 because the 5 is inside, the 4 is outside. Okay? Before we get too far into the assignment, please remember this is a quiz grade. Okay? We're literally doing a quiz grade together right now. Okay? To help you get ready for your test. Uh, no, it's only a plus, because remember, you have to pick one. So if it's a right half, then it goes with a positive. Now, look down at number two. I'm not going to do number two. But if it's a less than, which half is that? That's a left half. So when you pick the plus or minus, which one are you going to use on that one? The minus, okay? So that one's a left half. Now, just a couple of things to check. What would the start point be for this? Minus 5, then 4. Is that the start point? Yes. Do they match each other across the diagonal? Are they reflected? Okay, that should all be true because they're inverses. Okay? Um, jump down, please, to number 3. Okay, so number 2 you're going to do. Number 3 we'll do together. Okay, first thing, what is my center point here in the middle? What is my vertex? Minus 2 and 3. Very good. So minus 2 and 3 goes in your chart. Then remember, the two points above it are the left side. The two points below it will be the right side. And I'll pick in a second after I type it into my calculator. Okay? Now, when I type this in, you should notice that there's a negative in the front. So that's going to make a difference. So negative parentheses, x plus 2 squared plus 3. Okay, now, when I graph this, I notice which way is my u going to open? Okay, down because of the negative. So, second table. I'm going to put my negative 2, 3 in the middle. Okay, you can see two points above it are negative 3, 2 and negative 4, negative 1. Write those down. Negative 3, 2, negative 4, negative 1. Okay, then on the other side, I'll put it back up here. It should be negative 1, 2 below it and 0, negative 1. Negative 1, 2, and 0, negative 1. Okay, then I'm about to graph, but I have to pick a side. Which side am I going to pick based on my x over here? This is the right side. So do I want the top points or the bottom points? The bottom points. So cross out the top two. So negative 2, 3 is here. Negative 1, 2 is here. 0, negative 1 is here. And then when I connect my graph, I can see, okay, that's the down half of the graph. How do you find your new points? What do you do with the ordered pairs? Okay, remember they're always backwards. So if it was negative 2, 3, now it's what? 3, negative 2. This one will be 2, negative 1. That one will be negative 1, 0. 3, negative 2 is here. 2, negative 1 is here. And negative 1, 0 is here. 
And then remember, this is my starting point, so my graph curves backwards. And then when you graph it, you should see that symmetry around the diagonal. This one was pointing down, so that one's pointing backwards, so all of that kind of lines up. Okay, let's find the inverse. You switch the x's, switch the y's. So instead of it being negative x plus 2, now it's a negative y plus 2. And then remember, f of x is the same as y equals, so now it's an equals x. Okay, remember, that's how you find the inverse, is you switch the letters and switch the sides. Okay, what will step 1 be to solve? Okay, minus the 3 across. X minus 3 is how many? Or wait, actually it's just X minus 3. Okay, from here. Okay, this is the part that some of you guys might forget. Don't forget, if there's a minus in front, all that you have to do is put another minus 1 in the front, and then what's going to happen with the two negatives? They're going to cancel out. Now, on the right side, should you or should you not distribute the negative 1? You should not. You're going to keep the negative 1 on the outside. You are not going to combine it on the inside. Okay, then from there, I have a squared. How do I get rid of the squared? Okay, so I have y plus 2 squared, negative x minus 3. You can write the 1 if you want to, but you don't really have to. Okay, then I square root, square root. Okay, my square root and my square root cross out. That just leaves me with a y plus 2 left over. Then how do I get rid of the plus 2? Add the 2, or not add, but subtract. Okay. So I have y equals, here's my final answer, negative x minus 3, and then minus 2. That would be your answer. Okay, now I want to point out something to you. Do you remember that normally when there's a negative in the front, it goes down? What about if the negative is on the inside? Do you remember that it flips it backwards? Okay, and so I can see on my pink graph here, the reason it's going backwards is because that negative's on the inside. Okay, last thing I'll say about those two is you have a graphing calculator. So if you leave this page blank on your test, okay, you did not try at all. You have a graphing calculator. You should be able to do half of this just by typing this in here. Okay? Turn the page, please. We're going to do one of the cubics. We'll go ahead and do number four. Okay? So if I'm looking at that top one, what is my center point? Minus two, minus eight. Notice this one is called a point of symmetry because it's not called a vertex if it's a cubic. Okay, then I'm going to type it in. And one thing that you should notice is different as you type this in is that this time it's a 3 up here. It's a cubed and then a minus 8. Okay, so you can see that typed in here, but this time it's a cubed, okay, not a squared. Remember the shape of these, just to show it to you, is the little squiggle. Okay? So I'm going to go into my table, pick two points above 2, negative 8, then two points below it. So right above it is negative 3, negative 7, then negative 4, 0. So negative 3, negative 7, and then negative 4, 0. Then two points below it, negative 1, negative 9, and then 0, minus 16. So let's graph those points and then graph our little squiggly shape. So negative four zeros here. Negative three, negative seven is here. Negative two, negative eight. Negative one, negative nine. Now, can I graph zero, negative 16? No. That'd be like way down here. So you can if you want to, but it's gonna be off your graph. Okay, then it's gonna curve down on this side and then up on that side. And remember, you have a graphing calculator, so if you look at the picture, you can see if it looks right or not. Okay? How do I find the new points? Switch them around, and how should your squiggle be when you change the points? Instead of up and down, it'll be sideways. Okay, so 0, negative 4 is here. Negative 7, negative 3 is here. 
negative 8, negative 2 is here. Negative 9, negative 1 is here. And then my last point will still be way off my graph, but it's negative 16, so it'd be like way back here almost. And then when, when I do my graph, remember, I'm going to curve down on that side, up on that side. And then you see that symmetry just like you're supposed to. Okay? All right, then over here you're finding f to the negative 1. Remember, that means inverse. So I'm going to change this to be a negative y plus 2 cubed minus 8, and then equals x. Okay, and then remember from there, you're just getting your new y by itself. Okay? So step number one, to get rid of the minus 8, I'm going to plus the 8 across. So that gives me x plus 8 on the right side, negative y plus 2 cubed on the left side. Okay, what will my next step be to eliminate the minus? Okay, put a minus 1 here and a minus 1 here. Okay, and they'll cancel out on this side, but remember, do not distribute. Just keep the negative in the front. Okay, these guys cross out. So I just have a y plus 2 cubed left over. Negative x plus 8. Now, again, you can write the 1, not write the 1. doesn't matter. What's your next step? To get rid of a square I square root, what about a cube? You have to cube root. And remember, that means that you put a little 3 in the elbow of the radical symbol. Okay? These guys cross out. Only the middle is left. It's a y plus 2. And then, bless you, if it's a plus 2, I have to do what? Subtract 2 and subtract 2. And remember, you can't minus the 2 from the 8 because the 8 is inside. Okay, so then those guys cross out. And that'd be your answer. Okay, y equals cubic root negative x plus 8 minus 2. So when it starts with like minus, then it is minus. Yes. And then also remember too, I know we talked about this when we first covered it, but none of your numbers should really be going away. So this is what I mean by that. Like on this one, you had a minus 8 in the back. Now what do you have? A plus 8 inside, right? You had a plus 2 inside. Now you have a minus 2 outside. Okay, so all the time that should be happening where all those numbers are still there, but they're kind of reversed. I had a cubed, now I have a cubic root. Your negative was on the outside, now it's on the inside. Okay? All right, last one that we're going to do together today is number 6. Okay? All that you're asked to do on number 6 is to find f to the negative 1. What does f to the negative 1 stand for? It's called the inverse. Okay, remember to find the inverse, you switch the letters, switch the sides. So I'm going to start with this side, but instead of an x minus 1, I'm going to switch it to be a y minus 1. And then instead of an equals f of x, which is really a y, I'm going to make it equal to an x. Okay, and then on these, just like you did on your quiz, some of y'all did okay on it and some of y'all had trouble. Okay, you're only solving. You don't have to graph. So what would I do first? Okay, minus the 8 across. x minus 8 is left on this right side. 3y minus 1 is left here. What do I do next to get rid of the square root? Square, square. square. And when you square, remember you have to group this. These guys cross out. I have 3y minus 1, x minus 8 squared. Leave a little bit of space here. How do I get rid of a 3? A one-third. What if it was a five? A one-fifth. So whatever the number is that's times in the front, to cancel it out, you divide by that number, which is the same as the fraction version. Okay? And then remember, you do not distribute. <laughs> you can divide by three, but it's going to give you a fraction, and then you're putting a thing around it. So that wouldn't be wrong, but... 
So then from here, I have y minus 1 left over. We're almost done. 1 third x minus 8 squared. Last step, I do what? Plus 1 plus 1. And that's your answer. So it's 1 third x minus 8 squared plus 1. Okay? And then when you double check all that crap that we said earlier, I have a plus 8 outside, I have a minus 8 inside. I have a minus 1 inside, I ended up with a plus 1 outside. I had a 3 on the inside, and I have a 1 third on the outside. So all of those partners should still be there in the inverse. Okay? All right, y'all have like 8 minutes left. Work on the ones we didn't do. Okay, and then tomorrow we'll go through um, the last bit of that. Okay? The reason that we're, we spent more time on the front is because all this stuff... Okay, we've just been solving this week. So that shouldn't be um, brand new. We've been doing it all week. Okay?